how blessed I am to be able to be with, here with you this morning and to be able to share something that's been on my heart and, and to share the Word of God with you. Um, being that it is Scout Sunday, uh, we should be talking about scouting. Um, this is my, my first Sunday ever preaching. I, I Just to let you know who I am and what I'm all about, my name is John Bondas. I'm currently in my last semester at University of Baltimore studying business administration. I plan on continuing my education by going to seminary and uh, getting my master's in divinity and becoming a United Methodist pastor, and, and hopefully that turns into a career as a Navy chaplain serving our men and women in uniform all over the world. So let's talk about scouting. I have a, this is kind of the interactive part of my sermon. Uh, what is scouting? When you think of scouting, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Does anybody have anything? Fire. Fire. <laughs> All right. Camping. Camping. Service. Cookies. <laughs> How about popcorn, too? <laughs> Popcorn, all right, there we go, we got it. <laughs> well, scouting does teach a lot of these, a lot of really good skills, a lot of good principles. It teaches young men and women how to do things outdoors with camping, canoeing, hiking. You can learn stuff like first aid, you can learn how to shoot rifles and shotguns and bows and arrows. And, and these are a lot of really interesting skills. There are a lot of fun things that you can do in scouting. Um, and as I look back at my scouting career, I started to think there was more to what I got out of it than just these outdoorsy skills. It was more than just doing those, the kind of like hiking and being like a man out in the wilderness kind of thing. Uh, what I really found that I got out of scouting was a moral set of values, things that I could take into my life and I could live out. Uh, the scouting law says that a scout is trustworthy and loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. This is the Boy Scout law. The Girl Scout law is similar. I don't know it off the top of my head, but <laughs> it is very similar, and they both, both programs try and instill this, these moral set of values and how to live your life out in the community, whether it's serving people or helping people, um, some of the examples of things that, that I did as a scout was helping at homeless shelters by taking food or clothing to them, doing scout projects uh, for, for Eagle Scouts. Um, one that comes to mind is doing, a, doing a, a garden at a church so that the members of that church could go out into the garden and spend some time in solitude and, and really spend that time in that prayer garden. And uh, I go, think it goes even further than just helping in, in service areas, it's, it's instilled in every aspect of a scout. So, for example, when, when I was a scout, my troop, when we would finish camping and we'd pack up all of our gear and we would get all of our stuff out of the campsite, the last and final thing we would do before we would get in our cars and leave is we would line up against one row and one row against one edge of the campsite and we would walk slowly through and pick up any trash or anything that we saw and the idea was to leave that campsite cleaner and in better condition than it was when we got there so that the, when the next group comes, it's, it is clean and it is in good condition. And that's just having respect for the people that will be coming to that site after us. So the scouting program teaches more than these survival skills. It teaches you more than leadership or selling popcorn or selling cookies. It teaches you how to respect others it teaches you how to live that moral life. And as Christians, we have the same, a similar standard that we follow. As Christians, God calls us to be set apart. He calls us to live not by the ways of this world, but to live as Christ would live. Romans 8.29 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, though we might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So God foreknew who would be believers. He knew who would accept and who would be following. And he designed us to be conformed 
to the image of his son and to live as Christ would live. This is not an easy thing for us to do. We are broken people. We sin. We live by that sinful nature because we are broken. It's hard for us as, as human beings to live like Christ because Christ lived that perfect life. So how do we do that? What does that look like? As broken people, how do we live like Christ? And in the reading today in Colossians 3, 1 through 17, Paul discusses this. Verses 1 through 4, he says, he reiterates that we are called to be like Christ and to live like Christ. Verse 2 says that we need to set our minds on things above, not on earthly things. Meaning we need to orient ourselves and focus on Christ and how he lived and not not live by our sin. But this is, this is difficult because we often fall short of this. We all do. We often allow those, those desires of the flesh to be our focus and we live by them and we, all, we will fall short of the glory of God because of this. This is an ongoing battle that as disciples of God we face day in and day out from the day we were born to the day we meet our, our creator in paradise. Because we, we live in this way, we lose that connection to God. And, and I was thinking about this when, when Pastor Matt asked me to speak, and I was doing some research on what I was going to talk about, and I saw an example that kind of clarifies this, that another pastor used in a similar sermon, and he said it's like when the power gets knocked out of your house, Later on, it comes back on. 